Mr. Ingram, so we have this dynamic now that Mr. Kiley just laid out perfectly where you're seeing more and more crimes not really being counted as crimes. And you're seeing more and more criminals just being let out and not really deemed part of the criminal justice system for any meaningful period of time. And so I want you to bring like the average American who's heard the presentation, all oh, the crime rates are down, we're safer now under these policies that don't really punish people for things like theft. Like, what, is that, what does that actually mean on the streets of America? What would you say to an American that encountered that information, but it didn't jive with how they felt? Uh, what I would equate it to is we see it every day in our city uh, where we sit right now. It's mind boggling on how we, we, we talk about crime. For us, again, somebody that has been in Minnesota since 2012, the five years kind of uh, we had one burglary. Now we've had 12, 13. Every time I get a thing from our district attorney, it says we've reduced the charges to under $1,000 even though it may have cost me 20000 to repair the building, a safe, they rolled down three flights of stairs, ripped out walls, ripped out staircases. We reduced it down to under $1,000. And the person is back on the street, and he robs us again, and we reduce it down, and he robs us again, and we reduce it down. To me, that, that is the madness of it. Recently, our, our breakfast restaurant called Hope, Somebody broke into it, busted out the garage door, went into the space, and then we get a letter saying we've reduced the crime down to under $1,000, where the glass on the garage door costs more than that. It's, it's, to me, it's when, when we have these, again, this isn't a political thing for me. It's, it's real life. This is real humans. These are real businesses. We're having businesses close every single day. We're having people murdered we have a drug dealer that provided laced drugs with fentanyl to my partner's son. He died. He texted him. Something is wrong. He said, you'll be fine. We had his address. That drug dealer, to my knowledge, is still on the streets to this day. Mr. Ingram, uh, Vice President Harris filled out a questionnaire for the ACLU when she was running for president back in 2019. And she advocated for the position of decriminalizing fentanyl making it where that wasn't something where, where people would interface with the criminal justice system but would, would have a different path. Um, do you think that would make your streets safer? I don't believe that will make our streets safer. People, you must be held accountable for your actions. Words don't really matter. Actions matter. We can all say, I can sit here, say whatever I want to say, any of us can say. Actions are what matter. What is happening every single day is what matter, and that's really what we need is common sense to take over. If you've been arrested 50 times in three years, you shouldn't be out to do it again. Here's what I would get, Mr. Ingram. Why do people, I've never been a prosecutor, but why would you want to become a prosecutor to then not prosecute the criminals? That, that'd be like opening restaurants and not wanting to make food. That'd be like opening a bar and not wanting to make drinks. Like, do you ever get to talk to some of these folks in your community and say, hey, like, I just sort of assumed that me being the restaurateur, I would run a restaurant, and you being the prosecutors, you would prosecute the criminals. Is that too much to ask? Yeah. Unfortunately, I just get to speak to our first responders that show up on site, and I see the look in their eyes, how defeated they are, because they've arrested, they know them by name. We show them the picture, and they tell us their name. They know where they live, and they're so demoralized and defeated. It's, 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 it's insane. Well, we, we don't live like this in Florida. You don't have to live like this. Florida's ready when you are, as a matter of fact. But, but I do worry that these bad ideas that we've seen emerge in some of our Democrat-run cities could, could spread to other parts of the country. And in our last few seconds, what would be your warning to a community thinking about adopting these policies that reduce the theft thresholds and, and allow this type of conduct? My biggest thing would say, love people. And love is hard. My dad had to discipline me because I made mistakes. Discipline sucks, but it has to happen. Love people, and that includes discipline. Uh, that's terrific advice. I very much appreciate you being here, and I see my time's expired. I yield back. 